Singapore Home Brew on Money FM 89.3. The topic of vaping is where we are going right now. In Singapore, it is illegal. Uh, there was a big case just a couple weeks ago where uh, a couple gentlemen were filmed themselves in a Sentosa cable car, vaping and smoking, and not surprisingly were caught. And thousands of uh, vaping items were found in their apartment. Uh, that case is ongoing. But it is something that is against the law, whereas regular smoking of cigarettes is not. Let's get a perspective uh, from the medical community on this now from Dr. Ong Kian Chung, who is a respiratory physician, and Rachel Lee, a senior pharmacist at Guardian. Welcome to you both uh, to Money FM Saturday mornings. Uh, Dr. Ong, let's start with you. Just how dangerous is vaping? Because many people think it's a good way to get off of smoking regular cigarettes. Is that is that a good way to look at it? Yeah, well, <clears throat> thanks, first of all, uh, good morning, and thank you for morning. inviting me. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to be uh, talking about uh, vaping and uh, smoking in general. Um, I think uh, the, the main issue is that of uh, nicotine addiction that, uh, that, that it causes. Uh, the, the, the problem with vaping, especially smoking, is the nicotine that uh, makes people want to keep doing it more and more. And that, I think, is not good in general, especially for the young. And I'm very happy, being a true blue Singaporean, born here, bred here, that uh, Singapore is probably the, the first country in the world to ban vaping. It happened overnight. I, I still remember an uh, announcement in Parliament. And I think that was a smart decision. Uh, looking back at that time, there was no not much evidence out there that shows that the vaping is... Uh, more or less harmful. Uh, a lot of people are thinking by intuition that it should be less harmful than smoking. But looking back now, you can see what is happening to the rest of the world that allows smoking, uh, vaping. And you look at the teenagers that are vaping. In fact, in the US, there are more vape vapors amongst teens than smokers now. And you look mm. at the harm that it's, it's causing. So I think it's the smartest move. And Singapore being uh, good at uh, banning stuff, and I think that it was a really good move. Well, mm. before I bring in Rachel, I just want to follow up with you on that, uh, Dr. Ong. I've just returned from the UK, where vaping is everywhere. Mm. I mean, it is omnipresent. It's yeah. extraordinary. I, the levels of vaping just on the streets, outside office blocks, in shopping malls, the number of vaping shops in every high street that I went to in the UK, they are everywhere. Mm -hmm. And when I was talking to people, uh, Dr. Ong, they were saying it's much better than smoking. It's less harmful to your major organs. It's less harmful to the community. There's less nicotine and so on and so on. There's less fat, there's less harm from um, passive smoking. Just tell us for the benefit of our listeners, what are the real harmful effects of vaping compared to cigarette smoking? Okay, the, the, the bottom line, like I said earlier, is uh, that of nicotine addiction being the main issue of, uh, that we're talking about here. You don't want to be addicted to something that is potentially harmful to yourself and to other people. Uh, yeah, so uh, in terms of comparis comparing between uh, mm -hmm. vaping and smoking, uh, I think the jury is still out there. Vaping is certainly not safe. It is not 100% safe. Uh, in fact, it might be more harmful than smoking because they, if you talk about cigarettes being regulated, it, especially in Singapore, you, the, the authorities do uh, test the amount of nicotine that is in batches of uh, cigarettes. But if you talk about vaping, uh, around the world, there's hardly any control or mm. regulation. So you, and there are so many uh, companies that produce the e-cigs, right? And yeah. <clears throat> you do not have any idea what is actually in the the, the vapor that you're you're, you're yeah. inhaling. Dr. And, Hong, uh, to, to that point, though, one, one thing that does come to mind, and this is what I've heard from smokers as well, is with a with a, a vaping pen, you don't have the tar that you get from smoking traditional cigarettes, uh, tobacco cigarettes. And also, you know, there are carcinogens in the filters, I believe, the cigarette filters 
traditional cigarette filters. Are you, uh, what, what is your opinion on that? Is, is that a benefit? I'll put that in quotes for vaping, um, you know, no tar and perhaps, you know, no, no carcinogens in the, in the filters. Yeah. So when, uh, when, when vaping was first introduced, right, the one who in, invented it had the idea and it's by intuition that if you cut away the smoke in cigarettes, but you mm. still can get the nicotine in mm-hmm. your system, it should be less harmful. Uh, that is, again, by intuition, because up to now, there has been no controlled trials to look at the harm and benefits of smoking against vaping. Mm. Uh, in fact, uh, there is, uh, yeah, so it's introduced uh, as a concept that it should be less harmful because uh, after all the carcinogens that like you mentioned are in the smoke. So if you do without the smoke, uh, you just inhale a safe uh, yeah. liquid containing uh, nicotine, then perhaps it should be less. But however, till now, uh, and it's been about two decades since uh, vaping has come, come into the scene, uh, we, we can say that it is not harmless. Okay. Mm. Uh, yeah, and and how harmful it is vis-a-vis uh, cigarettes, the jury is still out there. And whether you can use vaping as a tool to reduce your smoking, that's also the it's undecided at present. Yeah. So well, let's I bring. Say, I was going to say let's bring Rachel in on this. Rachel Lee, senior pharmacist at Guardian. We've just had a comment from one of our listeners, Aloysius, mm-hmm. saying I've seen so many teenagers, even students. Yeah vaping openly while walking on the streets i presume of singapore i've also seen it so has glenn yeah. i mean let's get your take on it rachel as a senior pharmacist where do you stand on the on vaping and smoking generally in singapore hi neil and glenn thanks for having me today here sure so yeah. the thing about it is that i do fully agree with dr ong and uh, i strongly believe that it is not a safe and it's not a good alternative um, to when you're quitting smoking to change it to vaping instead because uh, like as he mentioned there are cancerous agents you are right to say that there are no tar there's no tar in vapes and e-cigarettes but there are cancerous agents and the nicotine content is not regulated so we don't know how much nicotine content these um, teenagers are taking in and that makes it really dangerous and I think for teenagers you know um, the danger is that when they look at vapes it comes in all kind of fanciful flavors it looks it's like it's hard to believe that something that looks so innocent can be you know can be dangerous but it is what it is and that's why it is illegal in Singapore yeah and it smells so good too they get yeah. cherry flavor apple flavor you know all these great flavors and i think that was one of the things you know when i was growing up and perhaps you neil when we were in school and kids were smoking you know kids didn't want to smoke too much because frankly it didn't taste very good right you might have become addicted or smell very good yeah yeah taste or smell you might have become addicted to the nicotine to keep you coming back but but now i have friends who who vape and they say they vape far more than they ever smoke cigarettes yep. Because it tastes good I've heard that. and it smells good and it's easy to do. And and Rachel, um, I guess that kind of plays in with your point that you were making as well. Yes, definitely. So I also believe that you know the more it, the way it tastes can also affect the intake of the the nicotine amount inside the e-cigarettes and the vapes. And can I just follow up with you, Rachel, and then get Dr. Ong's perspective on this? I don't want to play down this element of cancerous agents because one of the things I hear often, I know friends and family in the UK who vape. There are no cancerous consequences, if I can use such a term, with vaping as there are obviously with cigarettes. And you're saying, Rachel, that is not the case. There is science to show that there are consequences with these cancerous agents. Uh, Yes, I'm not sure what is the prevalence like in Singapore, but I do believe that in the US and in other countries, there have been many uh, hospital cases of uh, what they call a popcorn lungs. So these are mm. caused by the chemicals inside e-cigarettes, and uh, it also caused by perhaps the vitamin E acetate inside e-cigarettes. And uh, there are, I believe, a lot of other agents as well uh, that could make you sick, but 
you know, it's not regulated. We don't know what's in there. They have they haven't really done any long term safety profile on it. Yeah, so safety wise, it's kind of iffy. So it's definitely not a safe alternative when it comes uh, when it comes to quitting smoking. And just to follow up with Dr. To, yeah. Ong, mm. sorry, just to follow up with Dr. Ong, what research or evidence have you seen about the cancerous elements of vaping? Right. Um, yeah. So as mentioned by Rachel, um, there are addi additives that they put in the uh, E6 that are not safe. Uh, she mentioned uh, lung. She, uh, this is a kind of uh, uh, lung fibrosis, if you like, uh, caused by additives, uh, preservatives uh, that, that are in the e-cigarettes. And, uh, and in terms of carcinogens, yes, there are also uh, evidence uh, there are carcinogens in certain kind of uh, e-cigarettes, um, and, and especially uh, in the flavorings. And, and like you say, whatever makes it smells good and look uh, appear good, mm. these are also cancer causing substances. Um, and and uh, there's one more thing that was very uh, alarming in the states that pe young people were coming down with respiratory failure. Uh, this is for a few years prior to COVID, so so it was becoming a, an epidemic. You have about 2,000 young people with no prior medical problems, but just because they are vaping, ending up yep. in the hospital on ventilators uh, uh, due to um, acute lung injury. They call it wow. Ivali for short. So, wow. yeah. So, so certainly, like we are talking uh, from the beginning, that uh, there is no evidence at all that vaping is harmless. And the, the fact that it's not regulated on a regular basis, meaning that you can inhale whatever uh, into mm. your lungs with, mm. without knowing what's it going to cause. Yeah. Yeah. It's shocking when you put it like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is interesting, and and I know there's been a lot of debate. Uh, it should be regulated. It should be researched, and and I would I would believe that the calls for that or the argument for that is probably stronger now. Now that so many people are sneaking it in mm -hmm. to Singapore and doing it, there's you know the the cat is out of the bag yeah. when it comes to vaping, and and it, I think it's time to personally to, to regulate it and get ahead of it that mm -hmm. way. Because uh, obviously the ban is not working, and I can't stress enough how prevalent it is yeah. in the UK. It well, is in Singapore, everywhere. In Singapore, you see it on people doing it everywhere. On Singapore everywhere, I, yeah. I was shocked actually how yeah. prevalent it was. Um, a question now: uh, Singapore is has a goal now of reducing smoking rates to five percent by the year twenty thirty five. The the government's been rolling out measures to do this: uh, bans in all public parks and gardens at ten beaches, fifteen percent tobacco increased to, you know cigarettes here are already crazy expensive uh and and an anti-vaping campaign uh through the national health board do you, do these measures uh dr ong or actually rachel let's go to you do, do you think that they will have the in, entire uh, the intended rather effect desired effect of of getting that smoking rate down to five percent because it is an addiction for for most people right that are doing it but if you see the rates in the last decade, you will notice that there is definitely a decrease um, in the smoking prevalence in Singapore. But then again, when we look at the numbers in the last few years, it has always been stagnant at about you know, 11 10%. Maybe I'll say in the next couple of years, it might drop to 9%. And to be honest, I feel that Singapore is really putting in a lot of effort to try to um, reduce it even further. We will see taxation. We see... Um, mm. Um, increasing the legal uh, the minimum uh, the legal age of smoking from 18 to 21 uh, we see prohibitions of um, smoking in more public areas and so I do think that um, you know they are putting in a lot of effort but um, the next problem again is um, I believe in the next generation is probably vaping and a lot mm. has to be done to actually uh, reduce the the vaping prevalence here in Singapore as mm. we've as to whether we can uh, keep it to 5%, uh, I think it's a bit premature to to say whether whatever that we are doing works enough for that 5%. I mean, and we know that lots of changes are happening. My yeah. good friend of the show, Louis Ang, the mm. MP for Nisun, constantly mm. campaigning in Parliament to 
banned second-hand uh, second smoke. It's an ongoing concern. And I want to bring that question to you, Dr. Ong. It is a political question, so you can answer it from a medical standpoint. If we can ban vaping overnight, as you said yourself, it was literally banned overnight. You can see where I'm going. Why can't we just ban smoking as well? What is stopping us from doing that? From a medical standpoint, should we ban smoking, Dr. Ong? Certainly, from a medical standpoint, speaking as a medical professional, certainly, if you can, if you, if you have the willpower, if you have the financial resources, ban the cigarettes immediately. But, uh, but again, you have to think about uh, uh, the, the current smokers, uh, if you do that. Um, they need help to quit smoking. You cannot uh, just leave them be if you ban overnight. Uh, the, the the cigarettes, uh, but there is there is a movement that has been in place for some time to to get our younger generation not to smoke at all. It's towards a smoke a generation free, a smoke free generation uh, mm. campaign that has been touted, and and you, you just cut off the legal age for smoking from a certain mm. uh, for a certain age onwards. Yeah, say those who are mm. born in uh, twenty. Uh, after uh, 2000, for instance, and and since then they would have no more uh, access to cigarettes. So that is one way of doing it. Instead of banning overnight, 100 percent, and what yep. you do with the current smokers, yeah. Just to add to that, Rachel, they're doing something like that already in New Zealand. As of 2023, it will prohibit anyone born on or after January the 1st, 2009 from buying cigarettes in New Zealand. Hmm. Um, so they're going to annually rise the legal age limit for buying smoking tobacco products to eventually phase out smoking. Do you think that's something that could happen in Singapore, Rachel? Oh, well, I think it's tricky. And the thing about it that it could work for New Zealand is because New Zealand actually approved vaping as an alternative. Ah. But mm. in Singapore, yeah. so yeah, so, so I'm not sure why, because um, as we all know, it's not legal in Singapore. So perhaps what they are doing is they're switching, um, you know, I'm, I think they're switching uh, smokers to vaping as a safer alternative and i put in quotes here so it, it's as we all know from our previous discussion it's definitely not the safe alternative. and this is the challenge you know there's yeah, no there's a there, slight upside down chicken and egg thing exactly here. And, there, and there's no good data there's no good research to either prove or disprove that vaping is quote unquote better for you than than not hey we do have to leave it there um, I'm sorry to to have to say goodbye to you both but uh, Dr. Ong Kian Chung and Rachel Lee senior pharmacist at Guardian thank you so much for both being with us today and trying to shed some light on this yeah. ongoing challenge I'm sure we'll have you on again uh, in the future to discuss it but for now thanks for being with us thank you for having us thank you thanks guys